On the 15th of January this year, Mazda reveals its latest crossover for the Malaysian market, the CX-30. Many were puzzled on what it was and where it would sit compared to the CX-3 and the CX-5. Or why is it not called the CX-4 instead? We aim to find out as much as we could about this car at the official media drive of the CX-30 and with that, hopefully answer as many questions as we can on the car. We arrived at the Palm Garden Golf Club in the morning and we got to see the car for the first time during the reveal that took place shortly after. The convoy will take us out on the highways before we reach the Karak Highway or LPT towards our first checkpoint. The first thing we noticed was how well the active lane keep assist worked. If you were to veer on the dotted lines without indicating, the car will steer itself back to the original lane. If you indicate, then the system is disabled. However, if the lane markers are blurred, then the system would not activate. We were in the 2.0 petrol Highline car for the first part of the drive. The engine pulled strong on the mid-ref range with a good torque push from about 3000 to 4000 RPM. The gearbox responds reasonably quickly to the tap of your right foot getting the right gear all the time. The chassis is very agile to the point you might want to get used to its quick response. The CX-30's agility is something a CX-5 can only dream of. There's no scary body roll or movements. It takes the Karak Highway's high-speed turns with ease and confidence. The 55 series tyres provide plenty of grip and is comfortable from the driver's seat. We did, however, wish that the brakes had a little extra bite though. We were given a live demonstration of the CX-30's party piece the autonomous braking system. Mazda calls it the smart brake support and it only comes for the high trim cars. The system is capable of bringing the car to a complete stop automatically if it detects an imminent collision. The system works best at 40 kph and below. Above that, you may not stop in time but it will still deploy. The highlight of the system is that it works in reverse too. Very handy when reversing in tight parking spaces or malls. At our lunch break, we got to detail the exterior and interior features of the Mazda CX-30. The more you look at it, the more you get to appreciate why it's called so and not the CX-4. Think of this car as the coupe version of the CX-5. It's got a far sleeker design on the inside and out. Priority is given to style than outright practicality. From the choice of material, styling, design, the CX-30 is much more desirable. Almost like a shrunken CX-9 than a CX-5. There was an extensive mention about the CX-30's audio system and they were not exaggerating. This car indeed has excellent sound staging qualities. The speaker placement is optimized so sound travels to the listener in the best way possible. The cabin is also well insulated from engine noise as we witnessed in the petrol car. The CX-30 comes with two engine options and both are coupled to 6-speed automatic transmissions. Since we had tested its highway capabilities earlier, it was time to see how this Mazda crossover handles the B-roads. We took the CX-30 to our favourite stretch, Route 68, to see how it fared on its challenging surface. The first thing we realised was the subtlety of the diesel engine. It's got a mild but progressive torque delivery, almost like a petrol turbo engine. It responds very well and works in harmony with the gearbox and chassis though. Out here, the agile chassis really comes into its element. Very few crossovers can match with the agility of the CX-30 on a twisty and difficult road like this. The only limiting factor was the oscillation we felt at the back. It could be the way the damper has been designed, but we feel it moves two wavelengths before it settles. Aside from that though, you can whisk this Mazda CX-30 on our B-roads with considerable speed and ease. So where does it sit between the CX-3 and CX-5? Think of it as Mazda's take on the GLC Coupe or the BMW X4 and X6s. It's pricey due to its CBU status and it's got lesser space in all three dimensions. But that's missing the point about the car. It's a car that's best suited for bachelors or young couples. If you feel the CX-5 to be too utilitarian, yet you require the flexibility of a crossover, then this is the car for you. Our first impression on the CX-30 did answer quite a few questions we had about it. However, we still have a long list of unanswered questions on it. Hopefully, we can answer them during an extensive review of the car. What are your thoughts on the CX-30 Mazda? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.